I decided to take on my largest TikTok sewing challenge yet and make one of my favorite wedding dresses in all of cinematic history, Carrie's wedding dress from Sex and the City. I found this absolutely stunning champagne satin in the Los Angeles fabric district and knew it was going to be the perfect fit for the top half of this massive gown. I began the process by making my pattern using some style lines that I drew on my mannequin and then it was time to start cutting out the fabric. When I was patterning out this bust cup, it was super important for me to mimic the cat eye shape that the Vivian Westwood bodice had. After stitching the bust cup together, I made sure to give everything a really nice press so it laid flat and beautiful. I could then begin sewing the bottom half of the bodice. I also made sure to press these lines nice and flat. I knew this gown was going to be super heavy, so I added a boning to the inside lining of the dress. The last step is to stitch the outside and the linings together. Now that I've got the bodice in a really good place, I can now begin working on the skirt. It's going to have these massive panels, and in order to cut them, I had to lay them out on the floor to make sure that I could spread them out correctly and get the right cut. I've chosen to use an ivory satin that's super buttery rather than a taffeta like Carrie's dress because the one I wanted was like $60 a yard, and I figured since this is my rendition, this could work. After sewing and serging the bubble hem to the skirt lining, I can then begin with the crinoline process. It's so important that when you're making a giant skirt like this, you think of it like a sculpture. You have to build a great foundation. I can now begin working on the top portion of the skirt, which will be crafted from the same champagne satin that the bodice was created from. The last step will be to sew both skirts and all linings to the bodice. I also thought it could be a fun touch to do a version of Carrie's headpiece that she wore on her wedding day. This dress took four full days of sewing, 50 yards of fabric, and a lot of patience, but I'm so grateful that I took this challenge on because I think it turned out so beautiful. What do you guys think of the finished product? I've been dying to use some fabric from the shop in Los Angeles because the prices are so inexpensive and you have to dig a little bit, which I love. I found this amazing lace and I thought it could be a super cute little bachelorette party dress. So let's make a $5 bachelorette party dress. I started by making my pattern, and then after I had drafted it all out, I went ahead and cut out the lace, and I also cut out the satin using my rotary cutter from Joanne. The first step was to basting stitch around the outside edges of the satin to the lace for the bodice, so that way I could make it into one solid piece, and then I could stitch the side seams together and press them open beautifully. After pressing, I overlocked the seams, which wraps the outside edge with multiple threads to keep it from fraying, and then I could sew on the sheer top portion of it. Now it's time for sleeves, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and trim away the excess here so we can have a little eyelash hem, and then I can start stitching it in. The last step is to sew on the skirt, add in my zipper, and then I'm going to trim away the excess at the hem to give it an eyelash edge as well. And there you have it, a $5 bachelorette party dress. Today I'm attempting to create an entire wedding dress for less than $20, so you know I had to go to my favorite discount store in downtown Los Angeles, where I found this off-white, almost peach lace and this beautiful satin to complement it. I started the process by draping and then perfecting my patterns using this ruler from Joanne and then cutting out my fabric. I used the basting stitch to attach the lace to the satin and then I could start assembling the bodice. After stitching, I pressed everything nice, flat, and beautiful using the appropriate setting on the iron so that I didn't burn the lace. I started stitching the sleeve cap on that's going to be pleated at the top for a little bit of volume and it's going to be gathered at the bottom for a bishop sleeve. The sleeves are going to remain sheer which I think is going to be so romantic and so sweet. I can now begin working on the skirt, which is going to have a layer of this delicate lace over top of a layer of the shiny satin. The last step is to create the bow and the sash that are going to be on the front of the dress. I love utilizing inexpensive fabrics and trying to make them feel like something really special. I hope you guys love watching this boho $20 wedding dress come together. We're back at the discount fabric store and I'm only spending $20 on a wedding dress today. I found this beautiful gray lace that has a smoky amethyst undertone to it. I thought it could be a really fun way to interpret a modern wedding dress. My favorite way to design is by looking at the past for inspiration. So I'm going to be using some elements of the 1940s and the 1950s wedding dresses for inspiration for this. After creating my pattern and cutting out my fabric, I started to stitch the bodice together. After stitching, I pressed everything flat and beautiful on the appropriate setting so I did not burn the lace. Now let's overlock those edges. Now let's work on our sleeves. I'm going to have a cap sleeve and I'm going to keep them sheer because I think it will add some dimension to the dress. Now let's gather our skirt and sew in the lining and attach this beautiful crystal trim that I found as a belt. I think this is a really fun take on an unconventional wedding gown. Not every bride wants to wear the white frilly dress, so this could be a really great way for the bride that wants a non-traditional style dress. 